Hey everyone, it's Chris here from Everyday Survival Gear and today we are reviewing the Immolent DM70. I've had this now for like about a month. When did I put up the beam shots? Um, quite a while and I'm just getting to the review now. So yeah, um, after using it, I did actually EDC it for a while because it actually is probably the smallest, well it is the smallest XHP70 light I've got but it's actually one of the smallest 18650 lights that I've got which is funny because it doesn't actually use an 18650. Wow, let's get the review started. Alright guys, so here we are. We've got the uh, Immolent DM70 right in front of our eyeballs for review. Um, yeah, so as I said at the start, it's super lightweight, small and compact. So if you're after a 21700 light that is super lightweight, small and compact, um, this is probably the best way to go. So um, we'll run over what it comes with. Basically, you're gonna get the usual, the instruction manual. You get the lanyard. You do get the 21700, which is included. I'll show you that that later. It does have built-in USB charging. You get the uh, sheaf, the holder. You also get like a few spare O-rings and whatnot. And um, you also get, what's it called? The USB cable. And that's just about it, I believe. So straight up, yeah, there's a few things I have to complement Immolent on. Um, I would have to say that the size and the design and the overall features of the light are really good. Um, I do quite like the light. Uh, I wouldn't usually purchase a light like this myself, but I actually won this light by entering a competition on Budget Light Forum. And uh, me and two or three other people won this light. So that was pretty cool. Um, I wouldn't really probably go out of my way but after owning this light, I do quite like it. Uh, but it does still have its flaws that I think Immolet could pick up on and improve. I wouldn't really, I might be called out for this, but I wouldn't really call Immolet like a high-end flashlight builder. Um, more so probably mid-spec. You know, if you look back on my channel, you'll see I do own other Immolet lights. And like something like my Immolet HR20, the headlamp, I had the uh, positive wire. I just fall off for no reason on that light. So basically, I had to go in and solder that and fix it myself. I wouldn't, I would if I didn't know how to, I would warranty it and send it back. But I know, you know, sending stuff or buying stuff from China and sending it back, you don't really get the kind of warranty that you would buying from your own country. So keep that in mind. So basically, um, this light proclaims to output up to 4,500 lumens. So we'll run over that later. Um, it's got four modes or five modes. Low, low, middle, middle, high, and then turbo. Uh, you also do get a uh, sleeping light mode. So it does have a, uh, I guess you'd call it a auxiliary, auxiliary um, light output. Um, so the beam distance, 306 meters. Uh, peak beam intensity, 23,500 CD. Um, it is still a floody light. You're not going to get that much throw, but it does throw just a little bit. Um, impact resistant 1.5 meters, IPX 8 to 2 meters, water resistant. So blah blah blah. These are following ANSI standards. Yeah yeah yeah. So basically, um, then they just run over everything else. So it's using a uh, Cree XHP 70.2, as you can see here. I'll try and move the camera back a slight tad. Um, and there it is. There, uh, it's using a uh, SMO reflector. No, sorry. Blech. Uh, OP style re reflector. The freaking thing is right here, and I still get it wrong. Fucking spastic. Um, and um, also, it's got a uh, coat of glass um, using, you know, a slide switch, so there's no mechanical lockout. The light is pretty much always on. All right, lads. So what we're still on about the uh, build quality. So I think overall, um, Immolent put a lot of effort and design into this light, but then in a few areas, they kind of overlooked it. And they kind of added what I would mainly call useless features that I'm not going to use personally. You know, the knurling does work good. It's got really good grip. It does, you know, have these cooling fins here. But overall, you know, on a light that only weighs, I think it weighs like 93 grams. Like, how well are these cooling fins really going to do? Um, my one qualm with this light would be that Immolent left a metal reflector, right? So these reflectors are made out of al aluminium. And they left that sitting on top of the LED. So you can see how it's sitting on top of the LED. So, you know, generally speaking, you have the reflector sitting on a gasket. 
uh, and then that gasket will kind of isolate it from the MC PCB and it will isolate it from the LED but um, right now this appears to be sitting on just the uh, on just the LED I would like to take this apart and then um, throw that inside my um, what's it called my um, drill my drill press and then widen it and put a proper and then put a proper gasket on and I think that'll fix the issue um, you know is it bad for the LED well I've always been taught not to do this so I don't know how bad it is for the actual LED it is kind of applying pressure right now to the edges which if the LED does get too hot it could crack the LED which I have seen that happen personally um, also if you try to get this reflector off right now it's in a pretty bad spot that if the reflector moves you know it could kind of move side to side and de-dome the LED um, if you drop it I don't think it's going to move because the reflector will be in there pretty tight but if you did hit it hard enough you can see there's not much gap there so there is a possibility of you damaging the dome off the LED by them doing this that to me is a big no-no but on the lighter side of things, the uh, Inlet DM70 only weighs 93 kilos. Oh, 93 grams, 93 kilos. <laughs> oh, so heavy. Um, so yeah, this is the included 21700 cell. I'm not sure what brand it is underneath. It is rated 5,000 milliamp hours uh, and 18 watt hours. Because they added in the uh, charging bit, it doesn't fit inside any, any of my chargers I've got here. I think I've got a charger outside here somewhere. Where do I have it? This thing's dusty as frig. Look at how dusty this is. This is why you never mix metalworking or woodworking with electronics because your shit ends out like this. Oh, do not blow up on me right now, please. Is it going to fit? I might fit inside this one. Nah, it's still too tight. Oh, and this is a massive ass charger too. Uh, well, yeah. So it is super, super long, that 21700. Um, if you've got a charger that's built for those cells, uh, yeah, that might be fine. Um, I do not so it doesn't work for me i'll show you the uh dm70 versus the 21700 side by side can you guys no i cannot see that what kind of shit video is this all right there we go um side by side and you know we throw the blf a6 up here too uh, there we go too easy all right, so now for the fun part, we've got the um, output and the modes. So basically, what did I say before? How many modes has it got? Four modes, plus a strobe, which I've never used. No, it doesn't have a strobe. It's got a sleeping light. You can see how much I'm into this light. I do actually like this light, but um, I actually quite like the UI, actually. So we just turn it on. Simple one-click on. You can see now it's on. You push and hold. That's low mode, which is 30 lumens. So not really super low. Might be too high for some people. Um, when you do turn it on, it does activate this uh, green light here. There is a way to keep this light activated. And someone did ask, you can spin this around for some reason. I did not know why. I guess it kind of changes the shape, which lets out more or less light. Or you can be a DJ and go... And scratch it. I give up my YouTube now. Uh, middle and low mode. Push and hold. 300 lumens. Uh, middle mode. 1200 lumens. Then you got high mode, 2,500 lumens, then down to 4,500, um, then drops down to 1,200 lumens. So high mode is 2,500 lumens, and then we step down, it goes to 1,200. And if you cycle again, it doesn't actually go to turbo. Um, you've got to double click to get the turbo. So you double click, uh, and that's 4,500 lumens, and it steps down to 1,200 lumens after three minutes. Okay. So I'm going to overlay a chart somewhere here and I'm going to tell you kids a little bedtime story. All right, so I measured the Imminent DM, sorry, I measured the Imminent DM70 at startup. I only got 4,365 lumens, which is close enough to 4,500 lumens to call it even because that's probably within like the error of margin. Um, but after 30 seconds, it dropped down to 3,901 lumens after 60 seconds. 3,818, 90 seconds it was already down to 3,571 and at 120 seconds it was down to 3,652 lumens. So you can see it's dropped almost like a thousand lumens, well not really, that's 900 lumens, um, within that time. Is that 900? No, that's 600 spastic. 
Uh, I gotta go back to school. Um, and also, I'll overlay a um, graph showing you the temperature. So basically, inside the shed right now, it's winter here in Sydney, it's like 8 degrees outside. Um, the shed was 14 degrees when I tested it. And after 180 minutes, the light was at 64 degrees, and I was not able to touch it at all. Um, so you really got to keep that in mind. Um, you know, Imolent does give you all these features like step down, temperature control, and whatever that they call it, whatever they want to call it. Built-in thermal control module, which will automatically adjust brightness according to working state and outer temperature. But as I said, you know, the light only weighs 87 grams without the battery, so it really can't cool itself like that well to keep on going. So it is going to step down pretty steep. It's actually not the worst. Like, if you were wearing gloves and you could hold that, you would be pretty sweet because it did kind of steady out after 3,900 lumens. You know, a couple of hundred lumens drop isn't actually that bad over a few minutes. Um, but, you know, 64 degrees is kind of pushing it heat-wise. So a few other useful features that make me like this light. Um, it does have a lockout, so we can go one, two, three, four, and you can see that flash there now. Um, but anyway, Imolet kind of made the thing, it's in, indented, indented, it's not flat. So there's like a bump there, so you're not really going to push that anyway. So that doesn't really matter, you're not really going to turn it on. But that is a really cool feature, every single light with a side switch needs this. Is that going to turn back on? Oh, there we go. Um, it also, you can also leave this um, light on, the indicator light, which can be done, I think, by clicking three times. Let me just have a look. Uh, your flashlight off, press and hold power switch button for two seconds to turn on and off the switch indicator light. So right now it's on. Um, the only thing is they say if user forgets to turn it off, it turns itself off after three hours, which I don't really like. I'd rather it leave itself on the whole time. Uh, one other thing, if you want to know about it, is the bullshit sleeping light. You quickly press three times, and that leaves on this light here, um, which is supposed to help you get to sleep or something. It actually... Oh, <laughs> maybe made me yawn. <laughs> I don't know if it's talking about sleep or the fact that there's lights. Oh, lights on. <laughs> it's not a bullshit. It works. Um, you can probably use that as the ind indicator light anyway. If the other one wants to turn itself off. That's pretty much it. We're going to take this light outside now. And um, yeah. Check it out. Okay guys. So first up we got Lomo which is 30 lumens. I'm pretty sure it's a lot brighter than that. But eh, we'll let it slip. Um, you can just see it on, <laughs> barely. I know this camera doesn't pick up the light the best. Next up is low medium. I do not know why they named that at, but that's 300 lumens. Um, you can see it's already quite bright. Kind of seems more than 300 lumens to me, but yes. What would I know? I actually did test them, and they were higher than what they say, but not that much. Middle mode, 1200 lumens. Um, yeah, it actually doesn't seem like that big of a jump between 300 and 1200 lumens, does it? Hmm. Yes, my grass is getting pretty long, but it's actually, it's filled in a, lot, in a lot now. Usually it's not this dense, but we haven't had that much rain this winter here in Sydney, but it has kind of filled in a bit. Uh, we'll go one higher. This is 2500 lumens. So you can see more than enough light to light up my backyard. Looks like freaking daytime in here. We'll go to 100 meters to the tree. Uh, it kind of gets there. There's no way that you guys will be able to see that, but it does kind of get there. Uh, we'll double click now. That's four and a half thousand lumens in my backyard, keeping awake the neighbors. Thank you very much. Um, and it does get to the tree at four and a half thousand lumens. Pretty good, but it is like super wide. It lights up the whole tree. <laughs> so yeah, yeah quite an impressive light and because it is getting warm and it's keeping my hands nice and warm perfect light for christmas uh well at least for you guys in america because it's snowing over there in christmas so perfect light christmas over here is like 40 degrees not so great all right guys now i'm going to do beam shots 
but it's kind of pointless at this many lumens. But this is the uh, Everland DM70 on to your left. We'll won't double click. We will double click. That's the 4000 lumen mode. And um, to our right, we're going to have the Kolaris G20, which is an older light, but it's kind of the same setup. It's got an XHP70 instead of XHP70.2, but using a boost driver also. So that right there is the, uh, um, you can see it's stepped down, just then the Kolaris, and that is the uh, Imolent. Um, yeah, so step back. So the Kolaris, the Amulet is actually a lot brighter than the Kolaris. And my Kolaris right now is making a very weird whining sound, so I might turn that off, I think. That's just some coil whine. Should be okay. Yeah, Amulet DM70 on the 2500 Luma mode. Um, to our right, I'm going to put my BLF A6 on. That's running the direct drive with the XHP 50.2 to see how it does. So that's the uh, BLF A6 there, so that's the A6, the battery is kind of a bit flat because I do use this quite a lot. And that's the uh, Imolent on, but that's not even the highest mode, if we double click, that there is the highest mode. And this side is a BLF A6, and this side is the uh, Imolent DM70. So you can see the Imolent DM70 is just that little bit brighter, maybe like a thousand lumens brighter than the um, BLF A6. With the XHP 50.2 in it. One more comparison and then we're done. Alright guys, last but not least, it's actually a few days later now because this phone battery has been playing up. A pretty nice night too. Not as cold as all the other nights. Um, we have the Imolent DM70 on to the left. And to the right I'm going to put the Showstopper um, Ambitorch X9, which I've got a review for coming up soon on. This thing is friggin' super bright. Wait till you see it. So it's on low mode, I'll double click, so that's the Amutorch X9 there, and the um, DM70 there. You can see it isn't too much of a difference, but the Amutorch does outshine the um, the uh, DM70 by about 1,000, 300 lumens, but both super bright lights. That's the Amutorch there, a little bit of a throw your beam, it gets to the tree at 100 meters a lot easier, and that's the DM70 there. And that's pretty much it. Not bad. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video as usual. Um, like and subscribe. And um, thanks for watching. And um, make sure you check out the next video on the Amutorch X9. It's guaranteed to be good. We'll take it to a park and see how it does. This thing outdoes the BLF Q8 stock. Friggin' awesome light. Alright, thanks for watching, guys.